Before we flash Express LRS to the Ghost TX, I kind of want to talk to you guys about some risks. There is no going back. As of right now, we do not... Uh, Immersion RC really doesn't want us flashing. Uh, their hardware, well, they're not really supportive of it. So we basically erase our bootloader. So there's no going back and installing Ghost if you don't like Express LRS, which I don't think would happen because Express LRS is a way better firmware. But this is amazing hardware, and I wish Ghost, I wish Immersion RC would work with us so that we could say, hey, here's some hardware that can support both Ghost firmware and an open source firmware. It's similar to when you buy a Linksys router, you can install OpenWRT or you can use the stock firmware that comes with it. Both are great, but gives users choices and it would make this more competitive against TBS because you have more options. But I personally bought two just to flash Express LRS. Um, this one took a hit for the project, but this one works perfect solid and no regrets and i'm going to be buying more uh more emergent rc hardware because it's great hardware support the company i just hope they support express LRS soon but let's get flashing so here's the ghost module and you'll unscrew just these two screws up here and then you have to work work it open mine I've disassembled this so many times that the back part here comes off first now. And when you take this apart, be very careful with the wires. If you pull too hard, you'll actually break the JST connector. I actually had to replace them with longer ones, but the original stock ones are pretty short. So be careful. Also, there's going to be two screws here. This one and this one. You can pull those off, or if, you, if you're really good about it, you can leave it on and just kind of twist the module and you don't even have to take those connectors apart because I recommend not even trying. I literally broke mine pretty easy and someone else I know broke it. So if you just leave leave them open right here, you'll notice you'll have these four pins here, these four pads. Uh, you have an IO, ground, clock, and 3.3 volts. Now I'm not going to use the 3.3 volts. I'm going to use the power coming from the JR module and just take a servo, an old servo, cut the wires, and you can use these to connect to your ST-Link. So what I do is I solder, put a little solder on these pads. I'll speed this up real quick. Okay, not pretty, but it works. Now, once you have this connected, you'll look at, this is a um, ST-Link version two clone. You can get them on Amazon for about 10 bucks. And look at the top one. You wanna match your top one with IO, and then ground, and then clock. Bam, that's it, done. Uh, I actually take these apart so many times that I actually made a hole here to where I can actually run the wire and keep a wire dangling. Um, but you don't have to do that. Just plug it in and then you can flash it once, take this off, unsolder it, and put it back together and you're good to go. So the first thing you want to do when you plug in your ST-Link and the Ghost TX is change permissions. So you want to download STM32 ST-Link Utility. Once you install that, then you want to go to the Option Bytes. You'll see levels, you should see level one if you have never flashed this. This provides a little bit of protection for the firmware, but you want to remove that. Also, you want to, you might see some of these selected, you want to unselect all of them. So it says no protection. Now, once you do this, there's no going back. You basically won't be able to use the ghost firmware, which is a positive. So we'll do that. Now it's time to flash. Now we have to download the configurator. Click on the link in the description and it'll bring you to one of our configurators in development. We want to click on the latest one, which is this one, and drop down this area where 
you'll see the assets and we'll look for I'm running Windows, so no judgment, but I'll download the XE. If you're running Red Hat, Debian Ubuntu, uh, or Mac, you can download that as well. I'm going to download the Windows. And there, download started. This is one of the Express LRS configurators. There's two that's currently in development. I'm going to show you this one. And this is actually the first time I'm actually using it. So it's pretty impressive already. It's got your official releases, which will not actually use an official release in order to flash Ghost TX as of February 17, 2021. You have to use a branch. You click on this tab, and then you type in develop. This is our develop branch. We're still working on some stuff, but I've tested this Ghost TX for about two weeks now, and it's been pretty solid. I have better range, faster packet rates than the standard Ghost firmware. So you can just type in Ghost, and you'll see the TX. Once you do that, there's a couple options. I will select, make sure you select your zone. Um, we only have one zone for 2.4 gigahertz. Binding phrase, this will be, you don't have to use this. You can bind with the Lua script, but I like to hard code my phrase in there. So that's my binding phrase. Um, you can put anything you want. This is my phrase. Um, and make sure when you flash your RXs, they're the same phrase as your uh, TX. Then you can uh, use this little fun feature, 500 hertz. In order to use 500 hertz, you have to update your OpenTX with ExpressLRS firmware. It's a custom OpenTX version, so it supports 500 hertz. But um, build and flash. Make sure your ST-Link is connected, your radio is powered on, and it should do all the work for you. Here it shows you your building. The firmware. If this is your first time, it could take uh, longer than what you see in the video because you have to download all these Arduino packages. And it even warns you right here, a little pop up. But uh, you, this shouldn't take very long because I have all the packages already. Probably should fast forward this in the video. Okay. So it built, successful. Now it's going to flash to the ST-Link. And if everything goes well, you should hear a couple beeps coming from your radio. And you're good to go. Enjoy. One more thing, once you flash Express LRS, you do have both your antennas you'll need. One is the transmitter, one is the receiver. So you could technically put a patch antenna on this one to maybe get some more range for your telemetry, but you're transmitting and all the power is going to this antenna. This is just receiving. So kind of cool. You also notice that you'll have no display. We haven't added any um, control with the joystick because our, little skip, our Lua script is pretty nice. But that might be a feature later on. I personally don't really use this that much, considering I can just use my radio's Lua script, and it's a pretty nice Lua script. Yep.